Good afternoon everybody. Hello, welcome to Friday again. It's one o'clock so it must be Craft World Live time. Now I've got an exciting show for you again this week. We are launching brand new Hot Off The Press. I think I winked at you then a little bit. I didn't mean to, I promise. So brand new product and we've got exclusive discount codes. Of course you can see those already running across the bottom of the screen there. We're giving you 20% off this new product but also 20% off of some older Hot Off The press product as well but before I get into that so I need to say hello to you all I've got lots of comments coming up here for you so let's say hello to Cheryl Thomas good afternoon Karen, Sue, uh, Michelle, Natalie. Oh, from a wet black pool. Well, you should see it's absolutely beautiful here. So I'm sure that will be coming over this way very soon. Uh, Joe Crafty. I hope that's your real last name because I would love that last name. Uh, Rena Hurst, Linkirk. Hello to everybody. Hello, Mavis. Thank you all for joining me. Now, at the moment, I'm reading the comments over on Craft Stash Facebook page. But if you are joining us on Craft World, we're also going to take into account all of your comments as well. The reason for this is because we have some giveaways to do. So this week we are giving away, well in total there will be six winners. One of those I'll be announcing another time. But the five winners are going to come from these places. So we'll have one winner from the post earlier this week. So that would have been on the Craft Stash Facebook page. Um, there's a post goes up on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and that will give you a little hint of what's coming in the live on the Friday and also the opportunity to win that bundle of products or something something that's related so if you commented on that post you're in the hat to win we will be choosing a winner at the end of the hour and I'll announce that then there's a further three hang on four winners today there's usually three so that's really throwing me there's four more winners today all from these comments below now wherever you're watching it may be on the craft stash facebook page or it could be on any of those uh, related channels on facebook or it could be over on craft world comment wherever you are and we will make sure we are taking the names from everywhere but also when you're commenting let us know where you're watching from as well because i love to go back and read it and we like to know where you're watching from too where in the world as well and what's the weather like for you that's what I want to know today because it seems that all over the country everyone's got different weather rain sun thunderstorms whatever so it's funny weather talking of weather okay sort of we've got this new hot off the press collection shall we have a quick look at it so let's come down and have a look let me just move some things out of the way there we go so now we've got woodland crit now I was thinking weather woodland because I've got woodland near me and the weather the season changes in there are absolutely stunning um, the colors and things so while while you're just looking at this quickly um, hello from Sheffield from uh, Stan Smith I think that is Barbara from Scotland hello Canvey Island I know Canvey Island very well hello Lorraine uh, from haven't is that right I'm not sure. Uh, yes, yeah, so Teresa, vintage hot, hot off the press you say you have already now. Hot off the press has been going a phenomenal 40 years. Would you believe it? Uh, 1980, I believe it was started, around about then. Uh, the lovely Paulette is still running the company. She started it from her very own home. Um, she's still heading the company and it is absolutely phenomenal that it's gone along for all these years and the products are amazing. The quality is stunning. I absolutely love them so we're looking today these brand new woodland critters stamps let's have a closer look at those aren't they just beautiful those little animals have such character and look we've got little hats that we can we've got some more here as well that we can add into them as well we've got the trees we've got the sentiment the hello friend there too we've got that little wooden stump there we've got things like stars like acorns so you can really build up a scene whether it's a nighttime scene maybe with the owl of course foxes hedgehogs they all come out at night don't they or it could be daytime we've got little birds down here as well i'll just show you a card here some inspiration made using these stamps aren't they gorgeous absolutely beautiful you can build them up and make your very own scenes dependent on whereabouts you live what the weather's like at the moment whatever you want to depict then we have the farmhouse collection now I have to get these right so that you can see them without the light hitting them too much because they're of course in their packaging now we've got the rick rack down the sides here we've got the beautiful jars now I love these because you can make these into money jars if you're giving somebody a gift uh, of 
cash or a coupon or something. And who gives coupons? It's gift cards nowadays, isn't it? Um, we've also got the um, the pie, the strawberries, the ladybirds, the bees and things. We've got the cockerel, which is sort of on the weather vane there. Um, and your sweet hello. Again, really, really pretty. You've got the label there as well, so you can make your own little jars. These could be jars of anything, couldn't they? They could be, I don't, my mother-in-law used to make pickled onions at Christmas. Could be a personalised card like that, but otherwise bunches of flowers in them, especially this one. They will look gorgeous. Here's one with some flowers in. Now, just so you know, you've also got uh, some of these flowers later on in this set, so look out for those. But we've got this is acetate. It's been coloured with the, uh, what I believe is an alcohol marker because it's on acetate. And you've got the stamping there as well onto acetate, which is really clever. So that must have been using something like a stays on or an alternative, I'm wondering whether they've actually done, I do this very often, they may have actually used the backing paper for the stamp and cut that. So I'll have to ask, I'll have to find out how they got that rickrack there. Backing paper, I will come to that later. It's not in the brand new collections, but I will be showing you some papers from Hot Off The Press a little bit later on. So look at these stamps. These are absolutely gorgeous as well. So we've got florals in there. We've got butterflies as well, sentiments. These wreaths are gorgeous. And I think you could very easily mask off areas to make full circle floral wreaths if you wanted to as well. That would be quite easy to do too. So they are an essential, aren't they? I think you'll agree. These ones are your sort of staple stamps. Now we will be coming to some dies in a moment. I'm just going through the stamps first. Look at that. So, so pretty and so easy to do as well for a really pretty step card there they are beautiful beautiful cards I love this it's simple it's so effective for your background you can emboss it in silver to look like real wire it's the all over chicken wire it's an A6 size if you're in the UK that's about A6 size uh, roughly sort of your 10 by 15 I think it is uh, centimeters maybe a little bit smaller than that um, I'd say four by six inches maybe um, just to give you an idea of the size beautiful stamp and of course you don't have to stamp the entire thing you could actually just do an area I have a demonstration using this one later on um, hopefully it'll um, make you realize how much you can actually do with it that is gorgeous. I mean, look at that background just on that paper. I mean, that paper is what I think was white paper with some brown, just distressed brown ink, just distressed into it. And that black over the top. And I love the detail in the wire where it's twisted round. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Now on to the dies. Look at these dies. Hot off the press do this so, so well. They take a design that we all want in our stash and they make it absolutely beautiful, but they make sure it cuts beautifully as well. That is a essential it's all very well having this detail but the die needs to work perfectly and this really does four dies in here because you have your little birds as well now while I'm going through these and showing you these examples don't forget hot off the press we have got 20% off for you over at craftstash.co.uk you just need to use that code HOTP 20 okay it's across the screen at the bottom right now look at this archway this is gorgeous you could snip down the middle you could make those gates actually open up if you wanted to you could take the archway away snip into it so you've just got a, like a fence or a gate if you wanted to there's so much you could do with this one um jojo louise has just said that the chicken wire could be honeycomb it absolutely could if you've got some bumblebee stamps color it in yellow that would be perfect wouldn't it i'm trying to keep up with your comments while i'm doing this as well i promise you <laughs> so then we've also got the wheelbarrow and the watering can isn't this just gorgeous I love this again I really wanted this is an old old wheelbarrow isn't it it's more of a, a cart I really wanted one of these for my wedding and I couldn't find one anywhere because they are that vintage and that sought after I love the addition of the butterfly as well now keep this in mind when we have a look at some of our flowers and our foliage in a little while okay um, here's an example of why because they just fit together so well so this card here is beautiful all the dies every die die cut that you can see on here regard uh, not taking into account the card base but all of the embellishments are all included in this brand new hot off the press i love that that is so so pretty we also have our gathering basket and our clay pots. So, of course, um, your pots for the garden. Again, keeping in mind, these are your containers. These are what are going to hold your foliage and your florals that we'll come to in a little while. These birds are stunning. We did see one just on the top of this last card here. 
they are beautiful aren't they I love that basket as well and of course you do have the cut lines so that you can actually tuck things under and in if you want to there's score lines on these as well look at that look at that bird the inking on that is amazing absolutely gorgeous everyone's loving the wheelbarrow I've actually got my first demonstration is using that wheelbarrow it's beautiful now I don't know whether you you're saying you want the wheelbarrow in your garden or you want it on your cards but either way I'm putting it on a card on my first demonstration love the colors in this as well really really pretty then we have our all seasons oval wreath now I think this is a brilliant brilliant die set whether you've just got started into die cutting and you're looking for really good versatile dies that you're going to use lots and lots that aren't too uh, specific for anything or whether you've been die cutting a long long time these are going to fit perfectly because you have that oval we use frames don't we an awful lot you could actually use it to cut an aperture as well if you wanted to um, but we have flowers in here we have snowflakes in here we have different leaves and we have the seashells Whichever season you want to be talking about, what you want to be creating for, this is going to be absolutely perfect. You can put seashells all the way around, snowflakes all the way around. You could make the leaves green for spring and summer. You could make them red and gold for autumn or even winter if you wanted to. So they are beautiful. Here's just a quick example of that wreath there. It's got the addition of a dragonfly there but also with some flowers. I mean, that is really simple, but really, really pretty. Again, these backing papers, a lot of these backing papers that you're seeing, I'll be showing you later. So if you're liking them, keep an eye out for them. So then we have some florals. So hot off the press, Paulette was telling me that uh, they did some smaller florals. We're going to come to those in a little while. And then people were saying, but we want big ones. We want to be able to shape them. And this is what they've done. So they've got the large florals, which are beautiful shapes. And with the shape that they've done, because they're so versatile, you're going to be able to get lots and lots of different styles of flower out of these but look at them on the card aren't they gorgeous and then teaming them look at this foliage teaming them with this large foliage as well they're just going to fill your cards aren't they so we've got the fern leaves here and the bigger leaves gorgeous again any time of year could be spring couldn't it with the the bright yellow like so could be summer but then again, think about putting, particularly with leaves that, um, the green ones that don't die off, evergreen leaves, um, darker green. Do your, do your ivy colour greens and then put glitter on for snow and make them into a wreath, maybe with that oval frame that we saw earlier for a Christmas card. But look at this one with the purples. How beautiful is that? They are stunning, aren't they? They really are a good size to fill a card. Aren't they beautiful? Now this one is really different, but I love it. I think if you're sending a card, you send a card with love, don't you? And sometimes it's not specifically an occasion. Maybe it's just a note, a, th a thank you, a get well soon perhaps, but something just so to say you're sending some love. So this is perfect. Let me turn it this way for you so in case you can't make it out. It's actually one of these, what I would call an American style post box or mailbox that they have at the end of the drive. Now, of course, in the UK, not many of us have that but I really love the effect we all know what it is you've got the little marker on there now is this does anyone know is this a marker that you you put up to say there's mail in there is that what that's for because I'd imagine that's the only um the only purpose for it but somebody let me know if, if you do know what that's for the envelope is so cute now imagine using this envelope with some butterflies coming out of it or something aside from this just the envelope on its own is really clever really sweet the grass to go around the bottom of the post as well this bit can be used to color the inside so it looks darker inside as well really clever hopefully this is my third demonstration so hopefully we'll get time to do this one if I don't talk too much but here's an example of it being used and of course with this you could actually that seal but you could actually have that open up a little card pop out as well with another secret note in there too isn't that just really beautiful so lastly the last product we have to show you today that's brand brand new is these flowers so these are the tiny flowers and the tiny leaves and these were the ones that Paulette was saying are fantastic because all these little pieces one pass of the die cutting machine and they all pop out you haven't got to do how many have we got here so 12 well you haven't got to do 12 different passes of a die to get a nice bunch of le uh, flowers sorry to put on a card 
when they're put together look at these along with that foliage as well let's just have a look at that closely hope that's clear enough for you aren't they just gorgeous you can build up your own flowers in any color you want them to be ah oh, thank you so um it's for the postman the little marker on the top of the post box is for the postman to know that there's post to collect it's, I think I said that right. This, sorry, the comments are flying through so, so quickly. As soon as I get to read one, they're gone. So shall we dive straight in to a demonstration? I'm going to need uh, those dies, actually. I've just put them all to the side. This is the thing. When I'm on my own, I need to organise myself. So I need to have about eight different hands. So I'm going to be using, for this first demonstration, I'm going to come all the way back to the wheelbarrow. Of course, I'm going to be using this beautiful arch garden gate. So I, I long for a garden that has a, an archway or a gate like this. One day I will have that. Um, what else have we got? So coming back to the leaves, I've actually used an awful lot for this first card. I've got the leaves. I'll lift them up in a moment for you so you can see there. And I've used those smaller flowers as well. I've also used some pots and things. I won't get them all out, but a lot of it's already cut for me. Now, something else I have also used in addition to these, and I wanted to show you these quickly, is some backing papers. Now, I haven't used a lot because um, I wanted to keep the packs whole for you, but the papers that I've chosen to use for my card are beautiful. Look at this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, these are on Craft Stash right now. Okay, do you want to see them? Because these also have 20% off today. Let me show you the first pack. Now, there's lots of different packs in there. Let's pop these to the side. Look at these. Aren't they amazing? I love them. They are gorgeous. I don't want to give these ones back. We can see there on the side, we've just got this little slip. Now, this is really important because on the reverse of this, if I just open this up for you, there's inspiration as well for you. So you're not left on your own when you receive this paper pack, whether it be this one or I will show you a second one a little bit later on as well. Now, this wood grain is gorgeous. These are double sided. Look at this. Look at the detail. OK, let's just look at close up the script and the distressing that you've got in these. Now, I know that um, because Hot Off The Press are an American brand, they call this an 80 pound weight. I would say maybe around about 180 GSM by feel. Uh, they smell divine. Does anyone know uh, 80 pounds in weight to GSM to help the UK viewers out? If anyone knows that off the top of their head, you're a better paid paper crafter than I am. I used to know them all and I really don't now. But that's the weight of them, that they are gorgeous. Now with these you get uh, 12 different designs and you get two of each. So each of the six pages are back to back. Does that make sense? So... Look at these, aren't they gorgeous? Bird cages in there, you've got the stamps, wood grain, they're amazing. You've got like a hessian here as well. So you've got the florals at the side, they all match, they're just gorgeous. I'll whiz through these before I start my demonstration so you can see them all. This could be used either way round, it could be used on the side. For scrapbooking, this is going to be absolutely gorgeous and I really want to get back into my scrapbooking. This one I have to bring close for you again, look at those florals the images in the background aren't they beautiful um, you're all loving these papers as well there's some gorgeous um, large dark, large images in here but there's also some small ones so the large images like I said we've got the car here the farmers market the beautiful floors these remind me a little bit of uh, hydrangea we've just um, got a new hydrangea in our garden I'm excited to see what, actually what color it's going to come out as um, but if you're in the UK and you have those flowers, you'll know what I mean. But these are gorgeous. And then the background again, that distressed colour. But all the colours work so well together. We've got these bird cages. Let me flick through to gorgeous green. Again, this green, if you see, that's got that floral pattern in the background. And then we have our pieces that we can die cut out. All of our tags, our sentiments, they all work really, really well. And we have this like gingham, but it's a distressed gingham. It's a gingham with many, many layers in the background. And then, of course, we go through the same ones again because you get two of each. Now, they are stunning. These are some of the papers that I have used in this pack. Later on, as I get time, I will show you another packet or a different type of the papers that you can get that discount code off. That's H-O-T-P-20 today. So these dies are what I'm using today. Let's get straight on and make this card now. 
This is a, the Twisted Easel card. It's so, so easy to do. So with this one, all you need to do is take it, whether it's a card base you've made yourself or a pre-made one, and simply score from one corner to another on the left-hand side. Now, it doesn't matter whether you score from the left to the right or the right, whichever way you do it, it doesn't matter because I can fold this in half and stand it up this way. And if I prefer to have it coming the opposite direction, I can turn my card over and have it this way instead. So it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. You have a play with it so you can have it any way you want. Now I choose to have it this way, okay? So what I'm going to do is just use something simple like a tape runner or a double-sided tape. You could use a wet glue as well. Now the reason that Hot of the Press have you used such a good weight of paper for the double-sided papers rather than thinner ones is because usually what we're going to do with papers is glue them onto cardstock, isn't it? And they wanted to ensure that if we're gluing onto cardstock, we don't get that wrinkling that we absolutely don't want when we're doing that. So that's why they've given us such a good weight of paper. So just taping that straight on there, making sure that the bottom layer of florals there is going to be at the bottom of the card when I stand it up. 120 GSM, thank you. Uh, Sandra has just said that. So thank you very much for checking that out. It feels like it's a heavier weight. So um, it's just such good quality. And somebody mentioned about me smelling the paper. Yes, I always smell paper because the, the more it smells, the better it smells, the better quality it is. Uh, it's true fact, that one. It's not a made-up paper crafter thing. So next time you get some paper, make sure that you're smelling it while it's brand new, just out of the packet. It'll smell divine. So just going to put this in here. Now this time I'm going to make my floral sit on this edge, just so it's a little bit different. And when I cut these, I made sure that um, I had an edge all the way around my card base. So I've got a bit of a border and that just ties everything in there. So now I need to build up onto that. So I have already cut a few pieces just to speed things up for me because I want to get through three demonstrations for you. The first one was this archway. Now I cut this from craft cardstock as you can see. So it was just a plain craft cardstock. Look at the detail. Look how fine I can actually move these. Can you see that? How fine these little uh, iron bars would be. I'm guessing it would be an iron gate, a wrought iron gate. And how fine is that detail? Now I got this uh, sort of stippled look, this distressed look, simply by adding an ink pad to it. Let me show you how on the reverse. So I simply took an ink pad, no blending tool, just as it is, and I just pressed it on like so. This is a distress ink, and you can see you can work into the colour if you want to as well. So you can build it up until it's all black, but then you may as well cut it from black cardstock. Something else you can also do, which is really pretty, but I just take another colour ink pad, they're just above me there. I'm going to take a teal, so peacock feathers, and just add this as well. And this will just add a little bit of a patina to it. So if you imagine metal has gone a little bit old and it's got that gorgeous bluey greeny colour to it, that's the effect you would get from that. So let me just pop those to the side and show you. Isn't that just gorgeous? It just adds a little bit of ageing, a little bit of vintage to it, um, another level to it, doesn't it? There. Isn't that gorgeous? Somebody's laughing at me, but I've managed to keep away from the comments. I haven't seen what, what you're laughing at me for. I don't know what. I've probably said something wrong. <laughs> So, unless it's not me, maybe you're having a discussion between yourselves. I love that everyone's chatting on here. That's brilliant. Now, we are live, as I've said, on both Crafts, Craft Stash Facebook page, but also we're live on Craft World. So, um, if, you, if you want to, there is a link in the comments. Craft Stash have pinned it, so it should be at the beginning of the comments, to take you over to Craft World. I've talked about Craft World an awful lot, so make sure you pop over and have a look at Craft World as well. While you're there, if you haven't beforehand, please do just sign up, just an email address and a password. Join us over there. We've got exclusive videos, tutorials that you won't see on Facebook, you won't see anywhere else. Um, we've got things like an inspiration gallery where thousands of people, thousands of members are posting every, every hour, every day, 
cards that they've made, tips and things like that. All the editors for all the papercraft magazines are over there as well, posting projects from the magazines too. So uh, please do join us over there as well. Or you can carry on watching on Facebook, of course you can if that's where you are now. Um, and please do pop over there later and check us out also. Now, if you're watching this, you're thinking, look, I've really got to go and walk the dog while, it, while, the, <laughs> while it's not raining or whatever it may be. Um, come back later, by all means. Please do come back later. Um, you can re-watch this on Facebook or Craftwell, but you can also go over to YouTube. We do post over there, and it's well worth also um, checking out our YouTube channel and subscribing over there because, of course, we do also post a lot of videos over there. Now, like I say, Craft World are different. They have the exclusive ones, but YouTube has everything that you see from Craft Stash over there as well. So um, there's lots of different places you can catch up with us. Now, I just want to quickly cut live this wheelbarrow for you, mostly because there is a little hidden secret with this one. So I'm just going to tape it down just onto craft card stock there. Now I've got my die cutter machine here. I'll bring it into view a little bit so you can just about see what I'm doing. Um, and while I'm doing this, I'll just explain. So some of these dies actually have extra detail in that they have that embossing detail in them. So I'm just running this through in the normal way that I would be cutting any other die move that out of the way a little bit. I'm one of these people, if I don't move things out of the way, I'll catch my elbow on them and then that'll be funny bone time. Let me look at that. First of all, how well did that just pop straight out of the die, even those spindles around the wheel? Let's put it the right way up. Can you see, hopefully you can see in the light, that wood grain effect that's on there. Isn't that just gorgeous? So that has been embossed into the cardstock from the die, just from die cutting. Now you can take this to another level if you wanted to. If you have an embossing mat, you can absolutely run this through with your embossing mat as well to really emphasize that embossing. But as you can see, just from the, uh, just die cutting that has already done half the job for you. So I'm going to take my mat. Of course, I've got some little bit of mess on here at the moment from my green and my black on my gate. Just wipe that off with a wet wipe. And I'm going to take some brown ink and very lightly just go over the edges of this. We do have new foam blenders on Craft Stash. They are so worth investing in um, because they just make ink application so much easier, more subtle as well. Right, so I'm just going to go over that wood grain as well, but mostly the edges darker. What I then did, see that already starts to bring it to life to give it another level of colour there. What I also did with this one, and I'll show you on here, the one I've already done, if it's not wrapped up in the leaves too much, is I then added a, used a silver gel pen, okay, and just went over the spokes there and the metal bar here, okay, and that just adds an extra level to that wheelbarrow there. But we need to fill this wheelbarrow up. So no, it's not embossing, it's um, the gel pen. So somebody's just said, I'm sorry, I missed your name, Cheryl. So yes, that wasn't embossing, that was that gel pen on there, but it does look like embossing, doesn't it? So we need to fill this up with something now, start building this card up. So I'm going to pop that down on there and I'm going to be gluing that in a moment but I have some elements to go behind there. I've got my wheelbarrow, I have another container, I also have one of these pots that comes in the other collection, which one is it? It's, it's still in my pile, I've used so many of these. It's the one with the basket, okay. And what I've done is I've taken a craft knife to it just along the score line here, so hopefully you can see that. I've just, there we go. I've just cut a line along there. So now what I can do is I can take some of my larger ferns. So there's one. Don't worry about them flopping around because we're going to stabilize them. And my leaves, I'm just going to pop those into the pot. I can secure them on the back and I'm going to do that simply with a piece of foam tape. Okay. Let me just grab my scissors. I thought I was ready with everything, but apparently not. There we go. And I'm going to pop the foam tape, which is going to hold this to the card anyway. Pop that over those stems. Now I'll glue the, the leaves later on anyway, but I'm just going to think my, my gate is going to be positioned there. So I want to put my pot around about there. And now we can play with just feeding some of these leaves 
through the wires of the gate there. Now I know whereabouts I want my gate to be and I can move it along a little bit more if I want to just like so. So that's just tucked behind the gate there with a few leaves creeping through. I can now glue the gate down. Because this is such a fine detailed die I'm going to need to use a wet glue for this. So you could use something like a silicone glue as well. So let's just apply a little bit of glue. Now I had a question from, I think it's from Rena, about the uh, applicators that I was talking about. The Craft Stash Foam Applicators, yes they are flat, um, they're absolutely brilliant because they're a circular shape um, to them so you don't get any of the harsh lines that you would with, if you were to use, some people use um, these makeup blending sponges and things but these are so much easier to use. They're the ones that have, uh, they have a wooden handle, I've put Velcro on mine, that's just for my own storage, but they have the wooden handle and then they have the Velcro under here so you can change the foam pads as many times as you need to. They already come with a number of foam, clean foam pads anyway so you can have your reds, your blues and uh, your browns and everything separate to each other. Um, they're absolutely brilliant so hopefully that's answered that for you Rena. but yes they are essentially they are flat to help you with that blending. So just gluing down the areas, bear in mind this is going to lift up here so we don't want to glue any of that down we're just gluing this area and this post down. Now for the f the leaves here I need to put a little bit of glue just behind this post here just a little bit and attach this long fern leaf to it so that as we lift our card up this leaf also lifts with it there we go so we can leave that flat just for a few minutes while it sticks just ensure it could be by popping a little piece of card underneath it every now and then just ensure that there's no glue touching the card base otherwise you won't be able to open it okay so now my wheelbarrow is going to sit here but I'd also like it to come off the card a little bit I love the look of that um, with many cards I like things peeking off that's why with this when that has all stuck down I like that this is coming off I've interrupted that gluing now so I need to leave that a little bit longer but I'm going to have that like so but I need to first of all attach my um, my leaves and my foliage to here. Just try and keep up with the comments. Um, thank you Sarah Louise Rowland, thank you very much. Um, Jocelyn, I wish I spoke French. Um, I can understand what you're saying that you like things and that it's lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, hello to Joe. hello to Laura Anne, thank you very much for joining us as well. I absolutely love seeing all your names and your comments on a Friday afternoon. It really does make my weekend, it kind of just sets it off perfectly. Now I've taken different greens with these as you can see, darker greens, bright greens and then I've got a lighter green as well. This is kind of going to be a little bit like um, some foliage that's been collected up, uh, maybe some flowers that have been collected up ready for taking back and uh, creating bouquets from something like like that so true gardener style so I'm just going to pop these into the um, the wheelbarrow like so and arrange them while they're here holding the back and then I'm going to turn them over when I'm happy with the placement I'm going to do the same again I'm going to take a thick piece of foam tape and pop these down like so just snip that around there and lift up like this, there we go. So placing that one down there quickly while we've got the foam tape and then I've got a smaller one from these uh, the mini florals that they had and I can just place this one so that it comes down and curls over there. So the glue that I'm using here is a craft stash glue, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it glues anything to anything almost it's basically it's a white or like a PVA style glue particularly for crafters but this one is extra good because it dries really quickly it dries clear as well uh, a really nice strong bond to it too so it's my go-to the best thing about this is you do have the small nozzle on the end and on the reverse if I just open the other cap which it took me ages to see because I was just glad that I had a glue that worked I didn't realize I've got it all over my hands because I'm being mucky 
I didn't realise we also have a sp spreader on here as well. So we have, there we go, look. So if you're doing large areas, you can squeeze the glue and you can spread it with the rubber tip there too. So I think that was uh, Linda that asked. So there's your answer about my glue. So I, I must say, I'm not this good at keeping up with comments. I have the lovely Maria helping me, um, sending me messages with comments as well as and when she can. So thank you, Maria, for keeping me up to date with everything so that I don't leave any of you behind. Now, lastly, just to finish this card off, I want to cut some of these tiny flowers and leaves for you to show you how quickly and easily you can get these cut. So 12 little flowers in one pass of the die. Okay, so pop this off. I've just got a nice lilac here that's going to work really well with these um, flowers here. I've got, because of the joys of um, working at home, I have got somebody knocking at my front door, so I apologise if you can hear that. Uh, it will be one of the many parcels from Craft Stash, I'm sure. Um, but I'm sure he'll leave it with a neighbour, as always. When Neighbours are great for that. We'll soon be back in in the normal studio hopefully it won't be too much longer and things can return to some sort of normality so see we've got I've got some blues here that I've already cut and then I've got the purples as well and I can just use my glue and I can dot these around so I'm going to dot them into using the smaller ones I'm going to dot them into the fl florals here now to make this look more realistic I'm actually going to be popping them behind leaves as well as in front hoping you can see that okay there just like so and another one another purple one up here just tucking that behind that gate so that's quite a large one and then a few of the blues too so a blue up here another blue down the bottom and then I'm going to just do the same quickly over um, on the other side in the wheelbarrow too so you can see that subtle it's not too much they don't look like they've just been glued on because they're being sort of tucked behind so let's find us the smaller ones I love that you've got the variation of the sizes as well here so tuck this one in here I think hopefully that will stay this glue is pretty good another one on there isn't this beautiful now this could be a thank you card it could be a get well soon card whatever you need it really could work for so many different occasions let's just pop the last little purple on there just tucking it under that leaf there put the lid back on there we go let's lift this up and have a look at this card now hopefully you can see that and if I just turn it like so that's what you'd see now you could put a little message on the front of the wheelbarrow if you wanted to you could pop a message here as well too if you wanted to and if you want to create yourself a stopper so that this doesn't risk folding flat although that's pretty sturdy at the moment you could actually put a few of these flowers here um, just pop them on with foam, foam pads and they would act as a stopper there as well isn't this gorgeous don't you just love hot off the press their dyes are so simple but so effective particularly the way they all work together like this so that's my first demonstration we already only have 20 minutes left I think we're only going to get round to doing two demonstrations but who would like to see a little bit of stamping for this next one now while I'm getting ready I'll just uh, chat with you about some things we've got going on over on craft stash so if you're watching and you're thinking, well, there's offers and she's mentioning products and I'm not sure what's what. Well, actually, we have a section over on Craft Stash at the moment. You need to go to the bargain section and in there, there is an area that says uh, this week's Craft World Live. Under there, you'll have all the products that we have been using throughout the show and all of the discount codes are there, ready for you, or any, any sort of money off things. They're all in there for you, so you don't have to remember absolutely everything that I'm saying and every product that I'm telling you about. Pop over in there and see everything. So all of the new hot of the press will be there. You'll have the Artful Card Kits, which I'll show you. Sure, in fact, shall I show you that now? Shall we break away and show you what an Artful Card Kit is? Um, I've spoken about these and you've probably seen them going across the bottom of the page. 
I'll come back to my demonstration in a minute. But they'll all be in there. Um, there's the papers that I showed you, they'll be in there. We also have our deal of the day. I'd imagine that will be in this bargain section as well. So the deal of the day today on Craft Stash is perfect for my next demonstration because it's a stamping platform. And it's from Crafts 2, so it's their press to impress platform. Now usually this is $20.99 but today it's down to $18.99 so make sure you're grabbing that because a stamping platform is absolutely invaluable when you're using stamping. Now this this is my own one so this has been played with so you have to bear in mind that the die, die cut pieces are coming out because I've been using it. Um, but look at these. This is an artful card kit. This is the Abundant Florals one. And what you get with this is six double-sided papers. Now look at these papers. They are absolutely beautiful. Again, the detail that you're getting in there is gorgeous. I must admit, I, I've known Hot Off The Press. I've been around for many, many years. But... Um, I'd kind of almost forgotten about them because I used them years ago and then you move on to other brands so you look at those flowers aren't they absolutely amazing they are gorgeous and the music paper at the bottom absolutely stunning so um, I think what I'm going to do is because I do have three demonstrations I'm probably going to um, stay on this live a little bit longer if anyone else wants to join me and carry on maybe another 10-15 minutes get the third demonstration done if I can because I've got it ready for you um, the only thing is my dog and my children will come back from their walk at round 10 quarter past so be prepared for lots of noise but I'll carry on and do the demonstrations if you're all happy with that if you can stay with me that'll be brilliant if not do catch up on YouTube later Anyway, so look at these, aren't they amazing? I am so looking forward to being able to show you some demonstrations with these soon. Absolutely beautiful. So, Artful Card Kits, 20% off of these. So you get the six papers and they do repeat through there as well. They're all double-sided, they are gorgeous. And then you get these die-cut pieces. Now there's 35 die-cut pieces, as I said, I have been using these. 35 die-cut pieces within the packet. So we've got some here. Yes, some used ones. I did say that right at the beginning. I've been, <laughs> I did confess straight away. I've been playing, but they are beautiful. They're all look, they're all die cut. They all come away absolutely beautifully. You just pop them away. They've got the tiny little pips there. Everything just layers up beautifully. All the colours work together. So this is what an artful card kit is. Again, we do have inspiration as well. Lots of inspiration on that wrap that comes around them too. So please make sure you check those out in that bargain section. Or if you just pop in the word artful or the brand hot off the press into Craft Stash, you will find this and lots, lots more. I bet I've opened your eyes, haven't I, to some of the, um, the new products that hot off the press have been doing or have been doing for a while even um, have you seen them before because some of these I hadn't come across until recently and I am absolutely blown away I won't open this one up as well but as you can see we've got beautiful papers on there and we have got inspiration as well so there's another colorway for you in fact if I just do this hopefully you can see those papers that are included in there across the bottom so the beautiful pinks blues browns you've got the florals and you've got those die cut pieces so check those out. Right, should we do some stamping? So my next um, demonstration is going to be with the very first stamp set that I showed you, and that's this one. So this is the Woodland Critters. Sorry, my lights are a bit bright today. I have to have the lights on. It's a, the weather's very unpredictable today. It's either sunny one minute and then cloudy and thundery the next. So I need to keep the lights on for you, but look at those. So what I'm going to do first is create a background, a really simple background. So just with some Distress Ink, and I'm going to do some pale blue at the top. And just going straight in the middle of the card and maybe keeping a little bit to one side because I think sometimes you can do things a bit too central. And if they're too central, of course, if you go slightly off, it will be noticeable. It'll be, oh, that's ever so slightly to the left. If you do it a lot to the left or the right, it's not so noticeable and people will think you've done it on purpose so I always tend to go slightly off center on purpose for that reason the same with matting and layering go very much off off center and you'll be absolutely fine people will think you've meant to do it and then I'm going to add some green to the bottom now these are using those blending tools again so working in little circles I can blend out and fade the color out to almost nothing and because the green is so much darker I'm just going to come back in with the blue and go over this join line here 
and blend that in one to the other. Now I think these stamps, I'm really excited to have a go at creating a nighttime scene with them. So there you can see I've got sort of my green and my blue. This isn't going to be the focal point, this really is just the, the background. So here I can then um, build up on it, but it'll look a bit like the sky and the grass in the background. So next we've got some stamping. Now we've got two different types of trees in this stamp set. We've got the small, what I call the smaller, the um, almost bare trees, I think they are really, because they haven't got any leaves on them. Now I'm going to do these with a darker brown. Um, this one is a Memento ink. Doesn't The ink brand doesn't really matter too much. It's more about, um, what's the word? It's more about the colour. Thank you. I just missed that and I'm just going to stamp this to the side. Now because this is in the background, I've done it much darker, so it's almost like a black silhouette, a shadow. You can't really see the detail on it, but it's there in the background. The same with this one, just in the background. So what I'm going to do then, I always give my stamp a little wipe before I put it back, and then I'm going to do this one. So this much larger tree, I'm going to do with a different brown. I'm going to come in with the Versafine. See, I mix my inks all the time. Very much is dependent upon the colour. I go for the colour more than anything. But um, we've had a question about distress inks or distress oxides. Depends what you're looking for. Um, it really does. So there's different uh, properties to each one. I have some of both. So the distress oxides, of course, they've got more of that uh, chalky finish. They show up, uh, they are brighter on your darker colours. So if you're working on a dark background, your oxides are brilliant for that. Um, with the inks, of course, on the dark background, they're not necessarily going to show up, but they are absolutely brilliantly vibrant on your light colours. So hopefully that will sort of answer your question about the distress inks or distress oxides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brown ink and I'm going to colour that tree in. So pressing the ink into there. Oops. I will probably still announce some of the winners towards the end of the hour for you, for those who wait for to hear the winners. Um, and then I will carry on with my third demonstration after that for those of you who want to stick around and see that. That'll be brilliant. It'd be nice to have some company on the Friday afternoon. I'd love to know what you're all up to this Friday as well. Uh, what is your usual Friday routine? Are some of you sneakily watching while you're at work? Or are you uh, off on a Friday? Are you retired? Uh, would you usually be having the grandchildren on a Friday? Let me know what you're doing. So what I'm doing here is I've just taken a little bit of Distress Ink. Uh, any water-based ink this would work with. Um, and I've got a water... Um, I was going to say a water, water paste, it's not a water pen, a water brush pen. So it's got the water in the barrel so the bristles are already wet and I'm just picking up a little bit of ink and colouring in the tree. I'm not being too accurate with it either. I'm just brushing over here into the stems and this just helps, uh, st helps it stand out a little more from the one in the background there like so there we go if you want to as well you can do the same with the green leaves too but um, there we go that will do for now so now what I need to do is some stamping and I'm going to do some colouring in a very similar way as well so just pop this one back now I'm going to stamp for you let me stamp oh and Mr Fox I've got a few people already stamped already by people I mean animals but a few characters already stamped so just a little scrap of cardstock. Now what I always try to do is whatever cardstock I've used for my background and my card base, I stamp onto the same as well if I can. So I'll be using a smooth cardstock for everything so that I can stamp onto it. And that just means that this way, when I cut round them, because I'm going to be cutting these out, fussy cutting them out, I leave a little bit of a border and it all works really well. It all ties in. You don't really want a different colour, do you? Now, I could stamp these in a black that I'd usually use, but I'm actually going to use a brown instead. Um, so again, the Versa Fine. I just think keep with all the neutral tones with this one. And let's just stamp him. Isn't he beautiful? Let me hold that up for you so you can see him. He is fun, isn't he? He needs a name. Can we have some um, some examples of fox names, please? Something other than Mr. Fox. So we need to name him. 
Um, and I'm going to do this deer or stag for you as well. And I think Christmas time you could make him look like a reindeer if you wanted to. Um, you really could use these stamps all year round. Same goes for any of these dies and stamps. Let's see if we can just squeeze him on. Oh, we might run out of room on here. Let me do him on the reverse just so you can see the image. Oh, I didn't ink up this part of his antler. I missed a bit of inking. Look at the detail. Look at the shading under his tummy as well. Isn't that brilliant? I just, I missed that because I didn't ink it, but it's all right. I've already got him inked, colored and cut out, but let's just show you how I color these images in really quickly. Now you can take your alcohol pens to them. You could take your pencils to them as well if you wanted to. Um, but the easiest way, I always bring in this, this tatty old resistant mat. If you don't have one of these, um, anything will work. Something like, let me show you, some packaging. So I've got some plain packaging. I'll use this instead this time just to show you the difference. Or one of your acrylic blocks, as long as you clean it afterwards, will work equally as well. I'm going to take um, a red, a ready colour ink here and um, my water brush there it is again it's a water-based ink make sure it's water-based and I'm just going to take a little bit of this red and color in Mr Fox or whatever his name will be Felix I used to have a cat called Felix so we could call him Felix don't forget foxes have this white area so I'm under his face I've left him white I'm doing him as a red fox, but of course foxes come in lots of different colours, don't they? Um, we've actually got, there's a hedgehog in this stamp set. We've got hedgehogs living at the end of my garden. My garden's not very big, so I'm surprised they're this close to the house, but they're under my shed. I give them some, um, some little hedgehog biscuits every night, and they're always gone in the morning, which is really lovely to see the wildlife, isn't it? So just taking some red there now that's very very quickly i could do a lot more with that i could do him a little brown a nose or a, a black nose um i did make his eyes a little darker as well you can see really easy to color in like that and here's one that i've colored and cut out already hopefully you can see that easily enough i'm going to be calling him phoenix as as my cat was Felix. So I've gone over, I've actually taken a white gel pen because I accidentally got some ink onto, or some paint onto the ta end of the tail and uh, his chest and everything there. So I took a white gel pen, but you you can just avoid these areas when you colour them. And a little bit of black on the eyes and the nose. I've also done the deer there as well. And I did the little owl too. So there's the deer. Just you can see darkened his eyes up and also the owl. Now they're all very similar colours just to um, keep everything sort of tied in looking very similar. Let's clean this piece of plastic up. You never know when you might want to use that again. And pop you to the side. I'm going to just take around the edge a little bit of brown ink and this just helps. Now I did, this comes with preparation for these demonstrations. This is a bit of a behind the scenes look for anyone who's not prepared video, craft videos or anything before. You always have one that's already made on, the, not always on the reverse, but to the side, but I've got that on the reverse. So this one went okay, but if ever it goes wrong, you need one that's already put together. I should do a behind the scenes video, shouldn't I? For lots of different things like this. So I've got my background there. I've actually brought in a blue. Now this was the closest blue that I could find in a cardstock form that matched that ink in the background. So that's why I did that. Now I'm going to put some foam tape on each of the layers. And this again is foam tape that you can get at Craft Stash. Um, it's absolutely brilliant because it's so thick and I'll show you, I would usually put more than this on. I'd usually put at least a strip down the middle or all the way around the edge. Um, but look how easily this comes away. It's just brilliant. It's the lifting the edge of the tape up, isn't it? That um, puts people off very often with tapes but this just works so so well love that with craft sash tape and their glues that's something they've just got absolutely spot on so let's just do the same on this layer as well nice thick foam tape when I say thick I mean the depth of it and that's what's going to give you that drop shadow between the layers so for those of you who do need to shoot off at one o'clock, maybe you're finishing your lunch break or something, please do check back 
either here or on YouTube later on so you'll be able to see this last demonstration of mine over there and catch up with all these deals and offers as well. Don't forget the deal of the day is that stamping platform, of course, with the stamps. That's absolutely perfect. You can build up entire scenes. I've just got some foam tape on here as well, some thick foam tape while I'm talking. We have uh, this 20% off new hot off the press. Please make sure you catch that hot off the press. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful products and uh, you are going to love them but since showing them I think they are going to sell very very quickly the comments are brilliant here so hopefully you'll be able to get yours now again I'm just going to take Mr Fox Felix just off the edge of the card here there we go foxy lady <laughs> He's just a very funny Jean. He's just creeping off the edge. Of th I do like cards where the embellishments sort of sneak off of the edge. And then I'm just going to take my owl. My owl, I did paint the branches the same colour as the tree behind. I'm just going to pop Mr. Owl or Oscar the owl in the background there as well. Now, I'm not putting a sentiment with him, but I just wanted to be able to show you how the three go together. Like I say, thank you. Get well soon. It could be for absolutely anything here couldn't it absolutely beautiful now you could put sentiment my idea was and I didn't do it we've got a little hello friend um, sentiment on the bottom of the stamps there I thought wouldn't it be fun if the fox and the deer here had a little bit of string between the two with some bunting on and one of them said had hello friend stamped on it and they were sort of carrying it between them two I think that would be lovely so there's the two of the cards that we've made today already. I am going to make a third one. We are overrunning the hour today, but this is hot off the press. This is what it does. It just makes you want to keep creating over and over again. So um, please make sure you hang around or you catch up later for that one. I'm going to run through the new products again very quickly. Uh, if I can just grab them here. Just quickly run through what we've got that's brand new. You've just seen the stamps, so I won't take you through those again. We've just worked with those. What we also have here is the tiny flowers and leaves. We have the bigger ferns as well. We have that gorgeous arch gateway. Isn't that beautiful? Now, the wheelbarrow is here because I was using it. Let's just release this from the cardstock. I'm getting my typical crafter's mess here now going. So we've got the wheelbarrow and the watering can there. And then we have the mailbox. Now, I'm going to be using this in my next demonstration, so I'll just pop that to the side. We've got these gorgeous large leaves, uh, sorry, flowers as well, the bigger blooms. There's four in there. We've got the All Seasons Wreath. So I'll be looking at those in a little while as well. Uh, they are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely any season you want to be able to create with them because you've got snowflakes, seashells, foliage and flowers. Then we have the gathering basket and the clay pots. We saw me use one of those pots in the first demonstration. You also have the gathering basket. You can fill with those larger leaves there and the flowers. And these are beautiful demonstrations. Let's see. And this one I'm going to be using next as well. So the all over chicken wire. So this is absolutely beautiful. It's around about an A6 stamp there. So let me pop that to the side because I want to be using that one too. And these are gorgeous. I wish I had time to use all of these. Uh, we could have made it a three hour live. I don't think many of you have got three hours to stay with me today, but it would have been fun. Maybe I'll have got through everything. Um, absolutely gorgeous. You've got your sentiments on here. We've got for you, happy birthday with love and thanks. Beautiful floral wreaths there and butterflies as well. And then lastly, we have the farmhouse set. So the farmhouse set has these jars. Um, lots of you will know them as different things. So I think they're kilner jars, are they? is that correct? Uh, mason jars as well, sorry. Um, so they are beautiful. You could, put, you could make these into little night lamp jars. You could make them so that they're holding a butterfly. You could put them so that they've got pickled something in them. Or you could even put flowers in them if you want to as well. So very much a farmhouse theme with those ones there. So let's announce these winners because I have them sent over to me now um, let's just have a look so let's bring you back to me hello I am still here so these winners let's see so I know you've been waiting for these we do have a sixth winner okay I'll announce um, how you can win and I'll have another opportunity to win in a moment but the first winner that comes from earlier in the week 
Um, this lady uh, commented on the Facebook post. She has been picked from that. Um, I don't know how I'm saying your name. Is it Kathleen Janssen? I'm not sure. I hope so. I hope you recognise your name of some form or another. That is, I am the worst at names. I am so sorry. Um, but if it's Kathleen, something similar to that, um, I'll spell it for you. C A T E L I J N E. If that's your name, you've won from the Facebook post, we will contact you or you can send us a message instead and we'll get on to you. So send a message to the craft slash Facebook page and Maria will get back to you as soon as possible. And then from those of you who are watching today, I hope the four of you are still watching. Thank you for commenting. This is from the live video. So um, we've taken these not only from Facebook, but also from Craft World Live as well. So don't worry about commenting. Um, there's people all over the place. We bring all the names together. So we have Jeanette Leonard. Congratulations. Well done. Um, we have Debbie Siddle or Seidel. Sorry me and my names. Um, we have Laura Brick and we have Mandy Hobden. Congratulations to all four of you. Again, feel free to, to message the Craft Stash page, but we will otherwise get in contact with you anyway. So congratulations, you've all won a selection of Hot Off The Press goodies. So now do we want to get on with this fourth, third demonstration? Um, while I talk to you about how else you can win. So there is another winner and this is a huge winner, okay? This prize is also going to be the entire brand new Hot of the Press collection, everything there. So not a selection, everything. All you need to do is pop over to Craft World, okay? That's craftworld.com. You may already be over there. You may be. You may already know um, what goes on over there. You may already be a, a member and be joining and talking to us every day. If you're not, join up anyway. There's a post. Go to Craft World News. There'll be a post telling you about how you can win another collection. Okay, so make sure you're in the hat for that one too. If you love these new these new um, hot of the press products as much as I will, you'll throw your hat in as many times as you can. Okay, so. What I'm going to do, just sort of sneak peek of me practicing with it already, but I'm going to use this all over chicken wire. This is my uh, last demonstration. I promise it's the last one for today. Once I've done this one, we will go off. Like I say, my children will be home in a minute. They always walk the dog for me on a Friday whilst I'm working from home to get the dog out so he's not barking, but also to get them off of the internet. They will be um, coming back in very, very soon. So what I need to do is I need to grab my embossing ink, which I didn't get ready, and pop this. Now what I'm going to do is not cover this chicken wire stamp with the um, embossing ink. Okay, I'm not going to go corner to corner, edge to edge. I'm actually going to just do it in the center, leaving the corners out, doing it a little bit irregular and a little bit random. Okay, so making sure there's lots of ink on there. I'm just plugging my heat gun in as well. Get that ready like so. Hopefully that's lots of ink. And then I'm quickly going to press that down into the middle of my card here. So that should eliminate any really harsh edges from these corners so that it looks like it's uh, just a faded chicken wire in the background. Now of course you're not going to see this, this is a clear ink and you won't see it even when I add my embossing powder on but I need to go through this process. So just some, I use WOW embossing powder very often. I love because it's fine, it's detailed, it holds really well. There we go. I'm just going to take a sheet of paper. I'll just take one of these uh, uh, pattern papers just to tip the dry embossing powder off onto and I will clear that up in a little while. Put the lid back on here and I'm quickly going to heat set that. Now you just have to bear with me for a moment because um, this does take a few moments and the heat gun, I'm not sure if you'll hear me. I'll carry on talking but I'm not sure if you'll hear me over the heat gun. So bear with me a second and I'll just heat set this. So just wait for that to get nice and warm and then melt this powder. I've got it on the highest speed. So this heat gun is a Sizzix one. I'm hoping it's not too noisy for you. I'm just going along and melting all of that powder. It's really important that you make sure all the granules are melted because otherwise when we start doing the next stage, you'll brush some of them off the card. They need to melt and set and then harden as they cool to the paper. And this is really the first thing that got me into heat embossing. 
or in, sorry, into card making was heat embossing. So there we go. Last little bits there. There we go. I don't know if you heard anything I was saying while that was on, but I kept chattering away anyway. So that takes seconds to cool down. So it just needs to cool, harden, and then it's stuck to the paper. So I'm going to bring in the same blue that I used earlier, just because it's here. You could use different colours if you wanted to do a rainbow effect. It's still warm, but the all the embossing has hardened now, has cooled down enough. It's the paper now that's warm. And I'm just going to brush, as you can see, this blue, blend this blue. <laughs> Try and say that too quickly. Blend these blues into the background. Okay, so I'm using quite a, a thick layer of ink because I want it as dark as possible and that way you can then see that chicken wire is resisting and it looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? Fading it out to the edge again, so we're keeping the darker colour in the middle and then blending it with this blending tool that I've got here, lifting it out to the edges like so. So when I say lifting it, what I mean is I am literally, I am lightening the pressure. Still going around in circles, but I lift the pressure up so it gets lighter and lighter as we go out to the edges. And if you do have to reapply ink, as I'm doing every few seconds, um, start back again further in and work your way out again. That way you get a nice, a nice even blend rather than going straight in on the outside there where it's clean. Start in the middle and drag that ink outwards. It will move around on your paper for a while until it's dry. There we go. So now we've got a nice patch that's um, got the chicken wire really showing up. I'll show you the other side as well, so it's slightly paler, so slightly lighter coating. I like the darker one, personally. Um, but definitely have a play with that and have a play with different colours as well and how they look with that white coming through but hopefully you can see how that's resisted it's absolutely gorgeous it's one of my favourite techniques to do that now um, I've already cut these pieces out but the post box um, or the mail box it actually comes in separate pieces so we've got the stand we've got the actual box we have this funny shape here which as I said to you earlier if you were with us that is actually for in the center, you then can see um, it's a darker shadow inside, so it looks as if it goes inwards. And look, this is one, I was going to cut this live, but because we're getting towards the end of the video, um, this is the shape, the envelope shape. Now I've actually cut this from a vellum or a parchment, or even if you have it tracing paper, um, just die cut this, and then what you can do is fold it into that envelope shape really really easily okay and I've cut myself a tiny little card that will just slot inside there and on this card I've actually stamped now this comes from another stamp set in these brand new hot off the press products with love so that can sit in there and you can still see what it reads or you can lift it up slightly if you want to I'll just show you um, the set that that comes from so that's just in with these ones, so the floral sprays there at the bottom. So that's where that's come from. So I've got my envelope with my little card in. We've also got included here the grass. Now I cut this twice and I'm going to put one down. Let's start gluing these down straight away because I appreciate not all of you have all Friday afternoon free to watch what I'm doing. Some of you have things to do, I'm sure. And then I'm going to put the post over the top of this grass so it'll look as if this grass is behind it. Try and keep the post central if you can. If you're doing a central card it may be that like me sometimes you want to do one that's slightly off centre. So press that down, allow that to dry and then I'm going to put a little bit of um, glue on the second piece of grass and this one is going to overlap just here so, so it looks as if there's grass growing around the base there and then I'm going to pop the cap back on my glue so it doesn't dry out I'm going to take my foam tape now I'm going to take my really wide foam tape here and I'm going to place some foam tape across to this side now the reason being is because I want to be able to tuck my envelope into the post box Okay, so um, to be able to do that, I need to leave the 
I would say the doorway free. Let me show you what I mean. On this, we have a little cut line here. So we can actually poke our envelope inside there. So it looks as if it's coming out of the post box. Can you see it goes all the way through? So we don't want to put our foam tape here. We want to allow room for that to do so. So, um, so um, Liz, you've just said you love the American post boxes. There is something really fun about them, isn't it? I do sometimes wish we had something like that here, rather than people knocking on the door and disturbing my dog. Um, it would be good fun. I think you can have them, can't you? We do have boxes that go on the um, on the back of, or, or rather on the front of your house, uh, but not very often at the end of the garden. So with this one, I'm just going to put a little bit of foam tape on one end of the envelope and this is just the end that is out of the box so that I can tuck the other end in. So I'm not actually applying any glue either to this card, uh, this vellum envelope, sorry Trace, because once you've folded a vellum or a parchment, because of the weight of it, it actually really easily holds its shape itself so you don't need to then be doing that, uh, applying any glue. I've really whizzed through this demonstration. One thing I did forget to do though, and I don't think, oh, I can, no, I can't quite pop it in. I forgot to put my dark shade there. So that would go inside, but I think it's fine. I think we can get away without seeing that. And lastly, just to finish this card off, we've got some little butterflies. Now these came again in, um, this was in another set. I think this may have been the floral spray set as well. Um, and I've just, all I've done is I've, Print stamped them onto some purple cardstock there with a the black ink. I've cut round them. I'm just going to lift them up. So now the great thing about butterflies, what I love to do is fill any spaces. So if you've got a bit of white space, if you've got a blank area that you think, well, actually, I need to fill that a bit. I need I need something more going on there. This is very much a good way of doing it. So that's a quick card, but that was the third demonstration that I really wanted to, to get finished for you. I hope you've enjoyed these. Now, please check out Craft Stash because we have all of these hot off the press at the moment, but I'm sure they are going to fly out the door, um, particularly that chicken wire background from the comments I've seen. So please get your 20% off if you do manage to get some in your basket without it selling out too quickly. H-O-T-P, so that's hot off the press, H-O-T-P 20 is your code. If you've missed anything on the show today, let's come back here. If you've missed anything on the show today, um, please do catch up either on YouTube or you can watch this Facebook Live again if you want to. But you can also go on to Craft Stash, go under that bargain section and all the deals and the offers and the products that I've talked about are over there as well. Let's have a very quick look at those three cards we've made in case you did miss the beginning. Um, so this was the first card that we put together. I say we because you all helped me with your comments um, using the brand new Hot Off The Press product so the beautiful archway there the wheelbarrow the pots the foliage the leaves there's so much going on in there and those papers those hot of the press papers are stunning so there's the first card the second card was from with stamping and that's this one here with the woodland critters i absolutely love that just the one um product to use there those stamps but i think you'll agree that's absolutely gorgeous so so cute and lastly we just did our american style post box or mailbox there as well. So three very different stamps, but all coming from those hot of the press products are all brand new. Please do join me again next week. It's really exciting. Next week is, it's kind of my takeover. It's where I let you know of my favorite products in 2020 so far. Or there may be new products that you haven't seen yet that are only just coming to Craft Stash that I think you need to know about. So it's all about me and my demonstrations again next week. I need to get on and plan that and prepare that. So if there's anything you'd really like to see, please do let me know as well. You can always message on this live or you can send us messages to Craft Stash as well or myself, Lou Collins, and I will get back to you. So don't forget about Craft World as well. We've got that extra competition over there. Join over there as well. Thank you for staying with me that little bit longer. I really appreciate it so I can get those demonstrations done and I look forward to seeing you again next Friday. Please take care of everybody. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you again soon in just a week's time. Take care. Bye-bye.